Greetings and welcome to the Halloween edition of the Sliders Review. Alright, let's address the elephant in the room. I know it's not Halloween. Alright, that's long past. But, when it came to my Halloween videos, I ran out of time and I couldn't upload everything I wanted to. So, that's why I'm uploading them past Halloween. But if you stop and look at it like this. At some point in time, it's going to be Halloween time again, October. So somebody eventually will stumble upon my videos and watch it around Halloween time. So, yeah. And I'm here today to talk to you about Astrid and Lily Save the World. So this show ran for just one season and it came out in 2022. It aired, it's a Canadian show that aired on sci-fi in America. And you can actually watch it now on Tubi. So, back in October, I was on YouTube and some video popped up in my recommended thing. Not sure why, but it just did. And I saw the two characters and I saw the name Astrid and Lily. And I'm just like, Astrid? I've never heard a name like that before. And I like, save the world. I'm like, what show is this? I've never heard of this before. And it was on sci fi. I'm like, oh, okay, sci fi. So it's like, you know how sci fi is now. It's more horror than it is sci fi, which is really weird because it's named sci fi. I reckon at some point they're going to change their name. Remember back in the 90s when the sci fi channel was more sci fi? Well, it ain't like that no more. <laughs> <laughs> now it's into horror stuff and so I'm just like you know I'm looking at like the thumbnail I'm just like hmm these are two thickums and everything what's a thickum well a thickum is my way of saying like a thick woman um or a big woman because you know I'm just like you know I like women of all sizes but because I'm a black man I like them big <laughs> so I'm like let me check this show out <laughs> so I checked out the clip and I didn't know what the heck was going on. So I'm like, okay, let me check out the trailer. And so, like, you know, the trailer was just, like, interesting. It's like, oh, okay, these two high school girls are saving, like, the world from, like, demon and monsters. I'm like, okay, kind of sounds like, you know, Buffy or Crazy Heads. But, okay, whatever. So, yeah. So this is basically a Buffy ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> and everything even to the point where they reference Buffy twice in the show so yeah it's basically a it's a watered down Buffy ripoff now I said in my title this show misses the mark because it does this is just an okay show is not great is not spectacular but it could have been this show was a work in progress but sadly for whatever reason it got canceled after one season so they can't build on like improving this show which is a shame i've said this before if you're gonna make a show you gotta knock it out the park don't do watered down versions of like anything make it big make it bold you know it's like go big or go home basically it's like that and for the most part if it wasn't for the two leads i would have never stayed watching this show because it's just an okay mid type show that misses the mark um because the two leads are like great in this show you know what i'm saying like i really enjoy like them and stuff and no it's not just because they're big but it's just because they're cool in the show they have great chemistry and stuff but it's everything else in the show that's kind of wonky and everything see this is a teen drama comedy slash horror show but it misses the mark on all those levels honestly they should have taken out the whole horror um aspect of it and made this into a teen drama but even then the teen drama part in this is like not big enough. It's not bold enough. The drama is not bold enough. The comedy is not bold enough. 
it's just like little it's it's just very tame for what it is and you know that's the sad thing because you know like i said it's a work in progress if they would have like worked out the kinks this could have been a really great show and it would have lasted for more seasons because you know you gotta think about like how cool the representation is in this show you have two girls that are literally big as the leads you don't see that in television heck you don't even see that in movies it's very rare to have a big girl as the lead in their own show normally they play the best friend or they play the show oh, i can't talk socially awkward person in the background like a recurring character or like a side character or something like that but the fact that two big girls were able to get their own show and one i believe might be hispanic or something like that that is amazing and that is why i love diversity because they don't look like everybody else although one of them has slimmed down now after one year and now she looks like everybody else <laughs> so, ah, that's what happens in life you know, you gotta do what's best for you and be healthy and stuff. But in a way, skinny or big, they both look amazing in a way. But yeah, so it's a watered down version of Buffy. Why do I say that? Because, well, you got your two slayers who are monster hunters. You have your Giles character. You have your dumb Xander type character who gets with like the, the queen bee of the school. You have the queen bee of the school who later befriends um, the heroes in the show. You have that overly smart character who is able to figure out all this crap. And somebody else. Uh, and then, of course, you have your main bad person of, like, the season and stuff. And, you know, you also have kind of, like, that other character who is kind of just, like, awkward and weird and just kind of horny for, like, the nerdy Xander kind of guy. So, basically, it cloned these characters from Buffy. Only problem is, like I said, they're watered-down versions of them. They're not as big and bold as them and stuff. But, to be completely honest with you, even though it took elements from Buffy, this show is more like Crazy Heads. I reviewed Crazy Heads last month. Go watch that. Crazy Heads was a British show that tried to be like Buffy. It had two demon hunters, slayer type people. It was also a comedy. It was also light on action. And that's what this show is. There is no action in this show. Also, the monster demon type people are mostly in their human forms 24-7, just like crazy heads. And, you know, that just does not work for me. Then they try to throw in elements of drama, but the drama is very small on a small scale. But then in one episode, they decided to like, you know, hit you over the head with the drama. And it's like, man, how come I didn't see this throughout the entire show? Just like crazy heads. And so it's more of a Crazy Head ripoff than it is a Buffy ripoff, even though Crazy Heads is a Buffy ripoff and stuff. So there is humor, and I do like the humor in it. The humor is nice, but there isn't that much in it, which is fine. But there is no action whatsoever. How in the world are you going to like get rid of these demons if there's no action? You know, even Charmed had action in it and stuff, even though their demons look like humans 24-7, but still, at least they had, like, drama. Another thing they had was chemistry. A lot of characters in this show don't have chemistry with other characters. There are some characters and some acting portrayals that are just off in this show. And it's more than just one. These are what I'm considering the recurring characters. Why do I call them recurring characters? Because I don't believe they're main characters. Why? Because one problem with this show is that it will introduce you to a batch of characters, but they don't appear in every episode. In fact, they're pretty scattered. One will appear in one episode, then two episodes later, they will disappear, only to reappear back in another episode. So you don't know who's part of the main cast, and you don't know you should feel sympathetic and care about this person because this person isn't in the show in every episode there's only 10 episodes another problem 
you need more to tell a full complete story especially if you're gonna have this many characters in the show because when it comes to these recurring side characters you have the love interest who's kind of like this he has this bad boy in exterior but he's actually nice but he kind of has this goth type thing and he has black fingernails just like spike and buffy and then you have like this other character who starts off as a mean jock, but then he starts to become a little nice, but still a little mean. Then you have the mean girl who has a hidden secret because she's closeted and everything, and she's trying to redeem herself. Out of all the side characters, she's probably the only one with the biggest role. Then you have like this nerdy guy who saw there's something strange going on in the sky doing some investigation but the monster hunters won't let them help him and let, let, let him help them so he's doing it all on the side so he's popping in and out the show and you know it, it's just kind of weird then there's this other character who is into theater and sometimes she's normally getting chased by like a monster and but then it's like she really doesn't have no character development then they introduce this other character who only appeared in one episode then there is this gay couple um the gay teacher and the gay cop who they put in the show towards like the middle but then they took them out and then they pop back in and they pop back out and then but they gave them such interesting personalities especially the cop because he's an inferior cop that nobody takes seriously because he's not good at his job but then he's not really a main character or recurring he just pops in and out the show then you have the principal and i don't even know what the position of this one lady is she's either like the assistant teacher or assistant principal but she teaches other things at school because apparently people just started going missing and stuff and they're really rude to the main characters and just everybody in general and it's kind of like are they main or are they recurring like what exactly is it because they pop in and out the show then you have the parents who pop in and out the show then you have a sister to one of the leads, which I didn't even know she had a sister until like the ninth episode. How are you going to introduce the sister in the ninth episode? <laughs> then you have the overarching bad dude who apparently has to be resurrected. And his resurrection is cool because something happens and I think they fed him something. And then his arm literally started to grow and it's really gruesome and cool looking. Then he's always in like a, a black hoodie, a cloak and he talks in like the shadows then he finally appears um in the ninth episode but then it's kind of weird because throughout the middle like at first his voice sounded demonic then in the middle his voice sounded human then when he's revealed he's just a dopey looking human guy and it's just like i'm supposed to be scared of that then there is the giles character who is like probably the worst character ever <laughs> and he just pops in and out and he's not really a mentor even though he is and even the rules are kind of wonky on these demons and stuff so it's just kind of like there's so many characters who just pop in and out then there are the demons themselves who are always in their human form but when they show their demon form they got some really good prosthetics and it's like dude if you did such a great job with the mask why is why isn't this demon in the entire episode in this demon form and the way they get rid of the demons which of course there's no action in there thing um there are other ways to get rid of it. like one's allergic to mayonnaise so they run around with mayonnaise jars squeezing it at it another one doesn't like the sound of a clarinet so they have to play that um and it's just like a weird different ways to get rid of a monster i don't mind that but it would be nice to have a little action in there too and so like ah uh, there was something else so uh, crap there was something else that this show lacked that got on my nerves because it could have been a really good show it just the structuring in the format of this show is completely off in their thing this is why i said it's a work in progress and i hate like crapping on this show because i really like want to like it like i watch it and i'll probably watch it again in the future if it's still on tubi but it's just like they miss so many elements with this show and it's like how in the world do you do that you know what i'm saying 
And uh, oh, also, like, the girls have, like, a special type, like, power, which, okay, one, okay, whenever there's a monster around, they have, like, a monster sense. Cool, you know what I'm saying? One of, uh, one girl, her leg will cramp up, and the other girl feels nauseous, and she can smell stuff, right? That's how they know a demon's around. But the problem is that they gave them second abilities to where one girl with the senses is able to hear really good and able to see through objects. The seeing through objects only happens in like one episode. Why bring up this power if you're never gonna do it again? Um, as for the hearing, like once again, that only happens like twice. Why give her this power if they're not going to use it? And then the girl with the leg, her leg can turn like really strong so she can kick the crap out of something. She does, but it's not like a fancy martial arts kit. It's just like a standing forward and kick forward kind of kit. And, but she does use it like throughout like the series. So that's a good thing. But as for like the, the other thing, like why didn't they use the girl seeing through like, you know, the sky is type power or seeing through objects. And so, but then it's like, you know, how Giles would like help Buffy figure out what this demon is looking through books and this and that. Her mentor dude, Brutus, is like the worst of the worst. He is literally a demon with a reddish type of skin and a horn, but he's a good demon. And he helps them, but he leaves notes on their locker door like, hey, we got a monster. So somehow he always knows which monster it is. And he tells them, he hands them this brown looking sheet of paper like a scroll. And he's all like, all right, in order to defeat this monster, you have to do this, that. And you have to get this element from the monster in order to put it in the orb. I'll get into the orb later. And other than that, what does he do for the rest of the show? Heck if I know, because he literally disappears from like the show. He'll pop in for a minute, disappear, and he, he might pop up in the end or he might not. He's this really eccentric, like zany character who wants to experience everything human. So while the girls are out trying to look for a monster and kill it, he's out at like, you know, a carnival or like an amusement park or like the mall or like listening to music, dancing, getting tattoos and every other weird thing they like, you know, he could do. He's more like a big brother cousin than he is the mentor father Giles type. And he is the worst character in the entire show. Plus he's so zany and he smiles a lot and it gets on my nerves. <laughs> And it's like he's an incompetent, like he seems incompetent. And then he buys a stuffed animal with like a horn to it, which he's rubbing up against and loves it. And I'm just kind of like, how do y'all expect to get a second season when you write a character like this? You know what I'm saying? And I don't get that. <sighs> Like, this, this, like, the reason why I'm so, like, upset is because this could have been a great show. This could have been a really good show. And it could have lasted for more seasons. But they squander it with a half-baked premise and everything. And a half-baked structure. And all this goofy silliness and stuff. Like, another thing that bugs me is, like, okay, there's that, that jerk character who's a jock, right? He knows about demons since the first episode, but you would think, okay, if somebody knows about a demon, they will come at us and be like, yo, why are there demons around, blah, blah, blah. No, he don't do that. About four or five episodes later, he doesn't bring that up, and then another demon he sees, and then still mostly nothing. And then when other people find out, he's like, yeah, I already knew about them. Like, he doesn't care. I know he's a dumb character, but he doesn't care. <laughs> Stop. And so back when I was saying like chemistry and the characters and stuff, the, the, the two leads, oh yes, they have chemistry. But then it's like, okay, you have Astrid who likes this dude named Sparrow. And the Sparrow guy is just odd. Like everything about this character is odd. Like the motivations odd, the acting's odd, the chemistry between him and her are odd as well. It just doesn't click. Now the actor isn't bad, even though I said he's off in the show, because I saw him in school spirited and he was really good in that and he actually had something really to do in that show but here it's just like a phony in performance and i don't understand what the world is going on but it's like you know she crushed on him and and she would just look at him and he would just kind of look at her back in an odd kind of way but then all of a sudden a couple of episodes later she asked him out and then they started dating making out and doing it speaking of which why do they keep promoting teen sex and all these like teen shows i am sick to death of it 
You were supposed to teach teens not to have sex, not to have it. Do you want another teen mom show? No, I do not. Those people are literal, like, I can't talk, literally criminals on this show. Like, why would you make another teen mom type show? Like, no, don't promote sex. Say no, no to it in teen shows. <laughs> But then, of course, you have like, you know, I forget the one girl. I think her name is Brooke. She's the queen bee, and she's been making fun of the two leads since they were little because they're big and everything. And so then in one heartfelt episode, like in episode four, it's revealed that the reason why she stopped being friends is because her super religious mom doesn't like Lily's two moms because Lily moms, of course, two moms, they're gay. And so because of that, she had to stop being friends with Lily, but she just started. Sorry, my camera died. Candace, not Brooke. So she's like the popular girl. She's dating Tate, who's like the jerk type guy. And so she's not allowed to be friends with what's her name. But then she makes fun of both her and Astrid all their lives, just brutally for years, right? And so like then all of a sudden, in the next couple of episodes, she's, the, the way she keeps talking to what's her name is just kind of like, okay, wait a minute. You're not picking up no vibes between them, by the way, you're like none whatsoever. But then it's like you see Candace is trying to be nice and trying to be friend. What's the name? Because they used to be friends back in the day and then they had to stop. Then all of a sudden, by the seventh episode, it's revealed Candace is secretly a lesbian. And she's in, and she's madly like in love with that of um, Lily. Now, the way they handle the Candace character is really good. She's closeted. She doesn't want nobody to know. And like, you know, like, but she still wants to make out in secret and stuff like that and just be happy. But it's like, you know, like the problem is kind of like, not only should they done this a little bit earlier in the show, just a little bit because, you know, there's only 10 episodes. But it's like, you know, the chemistry between those two isn't really there. Because I don't know what it is about the Candace actress. It's just there's something not doing it for me. She's always sounding like she's sad and mopey and never has no expression. And, you know, and I get she's going through like this character redeeming arc and everything. But she rarely has any expression in the show. So it always feels kind of dull and kind of boring. And not only that, but it's like, you know, I, I like this is the part of the show that when it gets to the teen drama stuff is good. Because by episode seven to the end, it gets really good because it's mostly like teen drama stuff. Because, you know, she broke up with her boyfriend, Tate, because he was always into himself and never did anything for her. And then it turned out she's secretly like a lesbian. And then it's like, like okay, is she bi? Is she what? And so, like, he's upset and he outs her because he's pissed at her. And so when it gets to that teen drama stuff, it started to do it finally really good. But in the beginning, it really didn't, you know? And so, like, and then her mom is secretly hanging with the demon because her mom's super religious with this youth group and the youth group are like you know brainwashed into doing whatever she wants and she's been working with this overly powerful demon dude but it's like why exactly you know what i'm saying it's like nine episodes in and you don't know why and so that's too long of a wait just to surprise us towards the end you know what i'm saying and so it's just like there is a huge structural problem with this show and character development and stuff because in this one episode where they have to face their worst nightmare and they keep seeing visions wrong tate is a dude who plays soccer but doesn't want to his dad wants him to so it's that type of teen ya type thing right um lily kept imp um, imagining like you know the reason why Candace didn't want to stop being her friend wrong because the demon made him like do it wrong, vision wrong and stuff like that. Then you have Astrid who dad died and it was a really emotional episode, but there's only two really good emotional episodes, four and seven. And so it's kind of like, why couldn't this be throughout the entire show? That's what made Buffy so great. Buffy had the action, yes. She had the comedy, yes. But there was so much juicy drama that it kept you invested. Here, it's not like that and stuff. 
and it was sad about how Astrid's dad died because like you know um she wanted some kind of stuffed animal she left at like the pool or something like that when she was a kid so he said he'll go get it but he has to swing by his office so he was just going to do it um you know since he had to go out anyways he might as well go by the pool it was raining there was a car accident he died she blamed herself all these years for that that is really good stuff just to squander with all this silliness that goes out throughout the rest of the series and stuff and i wish it had more juicy drama like that you know then you had the stuff with tate he doesn't want to play soccer but his dad forces him to he has a girlfriend that he neglects and everything and she dumps him out the blue and he's like a really dumb character it would have been nice to explore that a little bit more <clears throat> and it would have been nice to explore like the whole religious mom thing and how she doesn't like you know homosexuality and you know like and her daughter is secretly like you know a lesbian has to like hide it and stuff like that and it's just kind of like you know this is like really good stuff that they squandered with all this silliness that goes out throughout the show like squirting a demon with like you know mayonnaise and you know there's another silly episode where it's like there's this one demon or monster i should say because they call them monsters and everybody is dancing weird they're in a trance and they don't feel no pain so when they get hit by a car they don't feel nothing or they chop their foot off they don't feel nothing and so okay they have to go find this like you know monster thing well it turns out the monster is just a nice monster who is sick with a cold and he fell through the portal and he wants to go back home so that's basically it nothing big and he's also based off that buffy character that demon with the flappy skin and he has flappy skin as well so it's like if you're gonna like duplicate buffy at least bring the drama in the action and stuff you know but oh yeah what is this show exactly about well i've been naming some elements but what exactly is it about well the first episode is kind of hard to want to root for our heroes on the show because they're just two girls who are big and they get picked on at school by everybody so i'm like you know that, that that's what i'm saying this should have been the show it should have been like a ya drama teen drama with a little comedy in it take out the monster stuff Anyway, these girls are weird. When everybody else is partying and having a good time, they're driving around the neighborhood with binoculars and spying through people's windows. How am I supposed to root for that? <laughs> then something happens where they accidentally open a portal to like a demon dimension. And 10 or no, 9 demons fall out or something like that. So in order to close the portal, they have to find these nine monsters, cut off a piece of whatever body part they need and put it in this gold metal orb thing, right? That's what their mentor Brutus has told them. And why exactly does it need a body part? Don't know, they don't really explain. And so, but it's a specific body part. Like you just can't pick anyone. It has to be a specific thing on that sheet of paper that he always has. Um, and so that's what they have to do. So they're at school with their secret identities while they're going around like killing monsters and stuff. And so like sometimes a monster can just appear and there and it's not even a part of like, you know, whatever spell thing they need. So they have to like get rid of that. And so but then there's this big bad dude there. Um and Brutus doesn't believe he's actually there. And they keep trying to tell me, yo, this one monster we tried to kill it was all like, you know, he's here and you think I'm bad, just wait till you meet him. But then the mentor doesn't want to believe it until the mentor has a nervous breakdown and starts to question it and then believes it. The mentor is always figuring crap out way too fast and I don't understand how, especially when he seems so incompetent and stuff. And why is he a good demon? And every other one seems to be bad except for the one that was sick. And so that's basically what they do. They find these monsters. They have to figure out who they're after and why they're after them. And like, you know, destroy them with some special way, chop off a body part, put it in the orb, and live out their teen drama like lives. And one of the things that was really good in episode seven was when Lily and Astrid stopped talking to each other. Why? Because Astrid found out that Lily is making out with Candace and she hates Candace because Candace was so rude to them. So she's all like, how can you date her after all 
the, the mean, horrible, nasty stuff she said about us that made us cry, made us only want to wear clothes that cover up our bodies and stuff like that. That's the good stuff in this show and you don't get enough of it. And so, yeah. But anyways, when you get to the final episode... So basically, in the last episode, they have to go to prom, and Brutus re um, reveals to them that he lied to them. The portal that they have to close in order to get all those demon like body parts to put in the orb and close their portal, he lied to them. Basically, in the eighth episode, it is revealed he has a girlfriend that's in a demon dimension and being held. So he gave them a fake orb. So that they can open the portal to his girlfriend dimension so he can rescue them. This was just something out of the complete blue. Like we knew he's been struggling missing his girlfriend since the 8th episode. But to throw this curveball into the show was just weird and bizarre. He is literally the worst. So they're pissed at him after they gave him a nice little gift. Because apparently they like him a lot as a friend. Even though he's barely there and barely helps them out. So he's going to let their world be destroyed by the Guardian and everything. The major bad person. The Guardians, which is a real crappy thing. It's just like, I don't get it. Like, uh, anyway, the Guardian is the most dopiest person in the world. He does not look threatening. He looks like uh, an average, like, middle-aged man. And they even mention that in the show. So at least they're aware of that, but yet they still did that. And so, like, he's coming to prom to, like, open up his portal. He wants to open up every monster portal in the world and let monsters just reign around the world, you know? So, like, Candace's um, mom shows up and Candace um, refuses to leave and all this other crap. And so, like, the girls end up at prom. Lily becomes prom queen. Tate becomes the king. He apologizes to both of them. And so they trying to save the world, but Brutus gives them another note. And so their friend Eggs is trying to like help them after everybody else has been frozen and stuff. But he was in the restroom. So Eggs is trying to defeat the major bad dude with all the other weapons they've been given. But their weapons are things like mayonnaise, <laughs> an oboe, not oboe, but um, clarinet. And a giant condom. <laughs> I'm telling you, to defeat some of these monsters is weird, man. And it's just like, how did they really expect to get a second season with stuff like that, you know? It's just so off the wall weird. But basically, since the portal's open and all this other crap, the Guardian killed, like, you know, Candace's mom. Because Candace's mom's all like, you promised you'll leave my daughter alone. So he just ripped her intestines out, killing her. So... <sighs> It's just kind of like a, a bit of a weak finale. But the way they destroy the Guardian is weird. So basically all his power comes from his necklace thing. If it's removed from him, then I guess he turns into like a normal human. Since human body parts is like what made him or some crap like that. So somehow they get dependent from him, which I still don't understand how. Then they stab him with gardening, uh... With them hedge clippers and stuff in the stomach. And he just set some fire and died. And I'm just kind of like, you know. <sighs> the creators and the writers brought this on themselves. Because this could have been a really cool monster um, hunting type show. If it were taking it more seriously. Or it could have been a really cool teen drama and stuff. But, you know, it is what it is, and it only lasted for one season. I think it is an okay show, you know what I'm saying? But, like, you know, it's just, it could have been so much better. So much better. And when it comes to two actresses that played them, you know, I really like them. I hope to see them in a new show or movie or something. I hope they can find work after this because they're really good. And they have such great acting ability, the great comedic timing, and of course they have great chemistry together. But the worst part is 
ends on a cliffhanger. So after the kids are like, you know, unfrozen, Candace is now pissed that Lily didn't save her mom. So if it would have got a second season, most likely she would have held a grudge. Then when the girls saw their portal open in there, I mean, not open, but close and everything, a white portal opened up behind them. And next thing you know, Lily can now float in the air. Back at the school dance, the assistant principal lady, don't know where the principal dude is, but the, 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 the main lady, a portal opens, she gets hit by lightning, and then she is possessed by a demon. So we will never know what exactly happened because, you know, they was banking on the second season. But, you know, sometimes you, you got to finish your season out and not try to anticipate what might happen in case your show don't make it, you know? That wasn't that spooky. All right, well, I shall talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs>